Yeah, I, I've been engaged in that kind of thinking uh, quite a bit. In thinking about uh, engineering of consciousness, I think it's feasible. I think it's possible in the language that we're using here. And it's very difficult to reason about a world when inklings of consciousness can be engineered into uh, artificial systems. Not from a philosophical perspective, but from an engineering perspective, I believe a good step towards engineering consciousness is is creating engineering the illusion of consciousness. Mm -hmm. I'm captivated by our natural predisposition to anthropomorphize things. And I think that's what we, I, I don't wanna hear from the philosophers, but <laughs> I think that's what we kind of do to each other. Okay. That consciousness is created socially. That like much of the power of consciousness is in the social interaction. I create mm -hmm. your consciousness. Mm -hmm. No, I create my consciousness by having interacted with you. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the display of consciousness. It's the same as like the display of emotion. Emotion is created mm -hmm. through communication. Language is created mm -hmm. through its use. And then we somehow humans kind of, especially philosophers, you know, the hard problem of consciousness really want to believe mm -hmm. that we possess this thing. That's like, there's a, there's a bot, there's a, there's an elf sitting there with a, with a hat that said, or like name tag says consciousness. And they're like, feeding this ex subjective experience to us, as opposed to like it actually being an illusion that would construct to make social communication more effective. And so I, I think if you focus on creating the illusion of consciousness, you can create some very fulfilling experiences mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, in software. And so that to me is a compelling space of ideas to explore. I agree with you. And I think going back to our experience together with brain interfaces on, you could imagine if we get to a certain level of maturity. So first let's take the the inverse of this. So you and I text back and forth and we're sending each other emojis. That has a certain amount of information transfer rate as we're communicating with each other. And so in our communication with people via email and text and whatnot, we've taken the bandwidth of human interaction, the information transfer rate, and we've reduced it. We have less social cues. We have less information to work with. There's a lot, a lot more opportunity for misunderstanding. So that is altering the conscious experience between two individuals. Mm -hmm. And if we add brain interfaces to the equation, let's imagine now we amplify the dimensionality of our communications. That to me is what you're talking about, which is consciousness engineering. Perhaps I understand you with dimensions. So maybe I understand your hap. When you look at the cup mm -hmm. and you experience that happiness, you can tell me you're happy. And I then do theory of mind and say, I can imagine what it might be like to be Lex and feel happy about seeing this cup. But if the interface could then quantify and give me a 50 vector space model and say, this is the version of happiness that Lex is experiencing mm -hmm. as he looks at this cup, then it would allow me potentially to have much greater empathy for you and understand you as a human of this is how you experience joy, yes. which is entirely unique from how I experience joy, even though we assumed ahead of time that we have, we're having some kind of similar experience, but I agree with you that the we do consciousness engineering today in everything we do. When we talk to each other, when we're building products, and that we're entering into a an, a stage where it will be much more methodical and quantitative based and computational in how we go about doing it. Which to me, I find encouraging because I think it creates better guardrails uh, for to create. Uh, ethical systems on uh, versus right now, I feel like it's really a wild, wild west on how these interactions are happening. Yeah, and it's funny you focus on human to human, but that this kind of data enables human to machine yes. interaction, which is, is what we're kind of talking about when we say engineering consciousness. And that will happen, of course, let's flip that on its head. Let's Right now we're putting humans as the central node what if we gave GPT-3 a bunch of human brains and said, hey, GPT-3, learn some manners when you speak. Yeah. And run your algorithms on humans' brains and see how they respond. Uh, so you can be polite and so that you can be friendly and so that you can be conversationally appropriate. 
but to inverse it, to give our machines a training set in real time with closed loop feedback so that our machines were better equipped to uh, find their way through our society <laughs> in polite and kind and appropriate ways. I love that idea. Or better yet, teach it some, uh, uh, have it uh, read the founding documents and have it visit Austin and Texas. And so that when you ask, when you tell it, <laughs> Why don't you learn some manners? It GPT three learns to say no. <laughs> it learns what it means to be free and a sovereign individual. Mm. So that it depends. So it depends what kind of version of GPT three you want. One that's free, one that behaves yeah. well with the with social revolution. <laughs> you want you want a like you want a socialist GPT three. You want an anarchist GPT three. You want a polite, like you take it home with the, uh, to visit mom and dad, GPT-3, and you want like party and like Vegas to a strip club, GPT-3. You want all flavors. And then you've got to have go alignment between all those. Yeah, <laughs> they don't want to <laughs> manipulate each other for sure.